gonna make something really, really unusual today. Ube and pandan cannolis. I don't know, only a few people have made these cannolis different so that they have, you know, a little bit of an Asian flavor to them, but I'm gonna really flip it over because I'm not only doing the ube and pandan flavor in the ricotta cheese that we're gonna use, but I'm gonna put it in the dough too. So it's gonna have a really cool purple and green color. I'm basing this recipe off an authentic Italian chef's recipe named Billy Parisi. Let's start off with preparation. You're gonna need ricotta cheese, whole milk preferably, the Italians use sheep's milk ricotta cheese, but you probably have to go to an Italian market to get that. Put that into a strainer and pat it down with your spatula so that the water drains out of it. And they say you have to do this at least two to three hours for it to soak down and dry up a little bit, or you can do it overnight. I did mine overnight. Next, we have to prepare the cannoli rolls. Their cannoli tubes because I didn't get any on Amazon and probably you don't want any permanent ones unless you're gonna make these regularly so you can get them on Amazon if you want but I know a way to make them out of foil if you're making a lot of cannolis you should definitely make a lot of tubes have your kids help you with these. They really like doing it, don't you kids? <laughs> Remember to hit that thumbs up to like my video and subscribe. Thank you. Let's get into the dry ingredients. Do not forget to sift. It will make it smoother. Now, for the authentic Italian version, you're gonna to wanna to add this one teaspoon of cocoa. But for our purposes, we're gonna use one teaspoon of ube flavoring, but that's gonna be a little later when we add the wet ingredients. This is white butter. Just kidding, it's lard. Or shortening, whoops. <laughs> One tablespoon of lard, or plop it in like I did. And that's not the right egg. <laughs> and one teaspoon of white wine vinegar. But I'm using something Asian because it's a good substitute, rice vinegar. This will get it started before we put it in the mixer. It is coming together like a dough, and you wanna squish it between your hands to get that shortening in there. When I first did this recipe, I noticed that the dough was a little bit dry. So you can tell if it's kind of crumbly like this. And what I would do is add one teaspoon at a time to see how it comes together. The color is not yet mixed in, but we're gonna put it in the mixer and it's gonna be smoother and more uniform. Ah, this is why you need gloves. Purple on the table, big mistake. Don't tell anybody, shh. I took it out of the mixer because I wanted to incorporate the purple a little more. So this is how you do it by hand. You just get a nonstick work surface like a silicone mat. And this is my favorite way to knead it. I just did the same procedure for the pandan cannoli dough. I accidentally forgot to add the lard to it, so I'm adding it now. That's okay. But this is all being kneaded by hand. Let's put it in a plastic wrap, and then we are going to wrap it up and put that in the fridge and sit for about one to two hours chilling 
so that it doesn't bite us because we have activated the gluten in this. And if we try to roll it out right now, believe me, it would just pull back and not make our perfect circle that we want for our cannolis. So this is the dough that I experimented with, the plain cannoli. And I got funny results and I wanted to share my tips and tricks with you. This dough was not very moist. It was more on the drier side and it tended to fight back at me. When I wrapped it around the cannoli tube, it came apart a bit and made a chalupa <laughs> instead. These turned out great, see? But check these out, they look like chalupas. I think I can fill them with uh, taco meat and we'll have some tacos, ole! In short, I don't recommend that it be too dry. You need to add moisture to it. If you need to add additional water, go ahead. Now let's see how these beauties turned out. We were able to roll it out to what I want, which is about a sixteenth of an inch. If the cannoli tube loses its shape, go ahead and take a chopstick and just reshape it and it becomes circular again. For the leftover dough, make chips. This is what they turn out to look like. And they're delicious. Hey, it looks like a heart. Time to make the filling. So we've drained the ricotta. We're gonna take three cups of it. Let's do this. Ooh. To get this ricotta smooth, we're gonna put it in a mixer with a whisk attachment and just whip it up. that half cup chocolate chips. I'm gonna try this. Mmm, mmm, it's good. I put a quarter teaspoon of ube flavoring and now I'm gonna add the ube halaya, which is the purple yam. It's like sweet potato. Ended up adding a half a cup of this purple yam jam, and I wanna try it. I wanna see if it tastes like ube. This is good. You're gonna like it. Last one, we're doing the pandan flavoring. I like it. It tastes coconutty. Here's our fillings. Pandan and ube. We are gonna stuff these babies. Oh my gosh, this is so big. I can't even lift it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Ready? Get in there. Whoa, oh my gosh, okay. Oh my gosh. 
gosh. Should we do um, some chocolate chips? Whoa. Oh my gosh. Check that out. Is that not beautiful? Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so cool. All right, first cannoli down. Let's try a, an ube one. Two brains. Okay. Time for the ube one. You have got to fill these. They are so cool. I'm gonna do the pandan one now. You look from that side, see if you can see it. <laughs> okay, you see? Powdered sugar makes anything look beautiful. Maybe I should powder sugar myself. <laughs> but you're already beautiful. Oh, thank you, baby. How's that look? Nice. Cool, cool. because I'm going to try one of these babies. Which one should I try? Okay, I, I like this one. I want to try this one. Look at that. Oh, the powdered sugar is tempting. Mm. I think we did a really great job on getting that crisp shell and exterior for these cannolis. Also, that pandan coconut flavor is really a different kind of ricotta that I've ever tasted. I think I need to try the ube one because I'm so curious. So the cool and funny thing about the ube is the chocolate really brings up that ube sweetness and it tastes really exotic. So I like this one a lot too. One more, you know I couldn't resist the original. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Mmm. Yeah, you guys need to try this. All three of them have out of this world flavors. I hope that you'll get a chance to make the recipe. It's not that hard. And it's fun. Just do it with me on YouTube. Thanks for hanging out with me, Glamour and Sugaries. You guys are the coolest. I think these turned out fantabulous. I would love for you to try the recipe. Make sure to hit the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe for me. So I'll see you again next time. Bye. Okay, this is what happens when I'm on the wrong side of the mixer. Okay, hold on. So, 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 so. Okay, that's it. That's all the so's I'm saying today. <laughs> it is now fully kneaded. <laughs> I'm going to put it in plastic. <laughs> Does that look nice? <laughs> they taste so cool. They taste cool. That's a cool taste like. <laughs>